Hello and welcome back to the channel Hell Dominance. Anthony here. Please remember to like and subscribe. And also please click that notification bell if you're enjoying what you're seeing and if you want to see more. Coming up in this episode, Meninga has his say on Australia's preparation for the World Cup. Results and scorers from two NRL games from round 18 on Friday. And the resolution for the League One game abandonment has been confirmed by the RFL. So we'll begin today's episode with looking at round 18 of the NRL, as there is a full fixture list. But due to origin, we're expecting quite a few of the players to be missing from the teams and the squads leading into the weekend. So how does the table stand for uh, these games beforehand? Well, first of all, we're looking at the Penrith Panthers, as it seems like it's theirs to lose with their six points gap uh, going into the end of the season run. But they may be without a few of their Origin Stars, but it's never normally the case with the Panthers. So we'll have to see when the teams come out later in the week, closer towards the game. With the uh, Cowboys now moved into second place after their win last weekend, the Melbourne Storm have gone down to third with five losses this season so far. And with eight games left to play, the Storm have lost two more games than what they did last year. The Sharks seem cemented in fourth place as they keep moving moving up and down from that position but I think fourth place is where they'll finish this year with the Broncos in fifth place do having a great season after the wooden spoon and lowest league position for quite some time um, over the last two seasons the Eels, Rabbitohs and Sea Eagles come next to holding the uh, last three places in the playoff picture but the Dragons, Roosters and the Raiders are still not out of it, as the Dragons have done well but lost last time out. Newcastle Knights are starting to get a run together, but is it too late for them to get in to that bottom half of the uh, of the eight? The Warriors are so inconsistent. They have good results and then go on a losing streak. Good results, losing streak. Same with the Bulldogs behind them, but the Bulldogs are coming more into form with Mick Potter involved. Gold Coast Titans and the West Tigers are the two that are vying for the wooden spoon at this point. Uh, but it looks like the Wests have hit a bad form and are looking to rebuild as well. So with the first fixtures played on Friday, we see the Cowboys versus the Sharks, the Eels versus the Warriors at Combat Stadium also in the second game. Then Saturday sees the Roosters versus the Dragons, the Seagulls versus the Knights, and the Titans versus the Broncos. Sunday finishes off with the Tigers versus the Panthers, the Storm versus the Raiders, and the Bulldogs versus the Rabbitohs. The first game of the weekend, the North Queensland uh, side face uh, the Sharks on Friday night in Australia, Friday morning in the UK at the Queensland County Country, uh, sorry, the, the Queensland Country Bank Stadium. Looking to break a seven game losing streak against the visitors that stretches back to 2018. A Cowboys led, John, uh, led by Jonathan Thurston got the win in round one that night but since then it's been all one-way traffic with Cronulla racking up wins both in Sydney and Townsville. Cronulla's big win over Melbourne in round 17 has seen them in the top four while the victory against the, their rivals has helped the Cowboys move to second in on points differential. With both sides looking for their fifth win in a row the top four battle is set to be one of the matches of the round. So here are the team lists, 24 hours out. The Cowboys have Tom Dearden missing after his origin heroics on Wednesday night and is replaced in the run-in side by Ben Hampton. Hampton's inclusion in the house alongside Chad Townsend sees Thomas Chester join the bench. Tom Gilbert is set to start in the back row, but could be a late swap on the day for Luciano Leilua due to his origin commitments. 
with the shark, Nico Hines and Toby Rudolph are set to play after the pair missed their winner last week over the Storm due to COVID-19 protocols. Blues Origin rep C.O.C. for Salake is also set to return despite featuring in Game 3 on Wednesday night. The powerhouse centre has been included among the reserves in place of Aidan Tolman. And it was a win for the Cronulla Sharks as they beat the Cowboys 26 points to 12 in Downville. First of all, we have Jesse Romain going in on the right edge before he went in on a controversial try on the 20th minute um, where it looked like that he didn't quite get the ball down, but the bunker says that he did. Review said that it was the slightest touch of the ground. Nicole Hines kicked two, got the two tries over, so it was 12 points to nil. Cal felt respond by scoring on the right edge of uh, the Cowboys attack. And then on the 37th minute, Blake Briley was sent to the Simbin for messing about at the play of the ball as the Cowboys were camped on the Sharks goal line. With Briley off the pitch in the team bin for 10 minutes, it was Hamiso Taboai Fidao who came through a gap that was opened up quite simply due to the numbers game that made the scoring 12 points to 14 at half time. As Nico Hines kicked a penalty goal on the 29th minute. Then after half time, there was a controversial decision. It was 19 minutes in, but Jason Tomalolo looked like that he scored underneath the sticks for the Cowboys. But there was an obstruction on a Cronulla player, a small one, but enough to get the ire of the video referee. Cronulla went straight up the other end, and on the fifth, it was a kick by Nico Hines in behind, and Hampton fumbled it back into his in-goal area, which meant that Teague Wilson was able to score right to the posts. Hines had the, the extras, and it was now 20 for the Sharks. And nearing 10 minutes left of the game, the final score of the game happened, as the Sharks' Sione Katoa went in for a fabulous try. It was a scrum play from inside their own 30 and 75th tackle bust of the year sees him with open field to run into. There was valiant efforts from Cowboys defenders but they weren't quick enough to stop Sione going at 70 meters for the try. Nico Hines added the extras and that was 26 points to 12. Defiant Australian boss Mal Meninga has insisted there's no added pressure on the World Cup holders, but it's critical this autumn's tournament is a success. He says the Kangaroos will be undercut after, ahead of their opener against Fiji at Headingley on October the 15th. They have had no friendlies arranged, haven't had a game for three years, and suffered a shot loss against Tonga in the last outing uh, for the nation in 2019. In an interview with the UK's Daily Mirror, Meninga said, Our pride was dented. We don't have to prove ourselves though. Tonga beats us fair and square on this on the day. This is going to be a total different side to even what that one was. There was a changing of the guard at the time. Our future immortals were retiring and there's a bit of change of the guard again now. The favourites Australia have lost just one of their last nine World Cup tournaments dating back to 1975, but rarely has there been such depth of competition. Tonga and Samoa are vying with them for some of the best NRL talent, while number one ranked uh, New Zealand and the host England also fancy their chances. Meninga will rely on this New South Wales and Queensland State of Origin series which concluded in Brisbane yesterday as the Kangaroos main preparation and the rampant NRL champions Penrith boost a raft of potential Australian internationals. 
Meninga, who coached the Australian side who narrowly beat England 6-0 in the 2017 World Cup final of in Brisbane also, said, We'll be as prepared as we possibly can be. It will probably take us a bit of time to click and find combinations. This is the beauty of the Penrith situation and likewise Queensland and North South, uh, New South Wales. There's combinations already there. You don't have to be Einstein to realise the majority of players will come from origin, but in my mind it won't be as smooth as it's been in other tours, because we've played other games before. 62 Meninga said that he insists also no one is to blame for the rusing activity. A three game 2020 Ashes series in England was cancelled due to Covid, then the World Cup's original date last year was scrapped after Australia and New Zealand were due to travel uh, to their ongoing pan uh, due to their ongoing pandemic concerns. But a film a firm internationalist Meninga who recently spent time in England preparing for the Kangaroos trip, knows how crucial the delay to the tournament now is for getting Test Rugby back on track. As he said, this is the ramifications of it all. So this World Cup becomes important, doesn't it? And it's important to get it right. Every team is strong as it can be. We play as best we can to promote and promote it as best we can. It's like a starting point again for us. For the international game, I do think it really, it's really critical this works. And we do everything we possibly can to make it work. Before we continue uh, with our final segment, the uh, last NRL game of Friday, we have some housekeeping that we have to go through, and it concerns the Betfred League One game between the London Scholars and Keith Cougars. As we've reported previously, that um, London Scholars made a statement saying that they were unable to uh, find sufficient medical cover to help make sure the game went on legally. Um, with all the right insurances, the right personnel, and everything like that, what's needed to play a top flight rugby league game. Or in this case, a third tier rugby league game. Still counts, played in the stadium, played with paid players, still has to have a doctor on call, which unfortunately London Scholars weren't able to get anyone uh, available. They tried, exhausted all their avenues to get this adequate cover well they were unable to cut uh, to play the game so called it off 24 hours in advance bit disappointing for the Keefley fans who wanted to go down and see their team play against scholars might have bought the tickets but unfortunately for those that purchased the tickets they'll be in line for, for refunds as the RFL have made their decision and you can guess what it is the Betfred League 1 fixture between London Scholars and Keithley Cougars, due to have been played Saturday 9th of July, has been awarded to the Keithley Cougars by a winning margin of 48 points to nil, in line with the RFL's operational rules, B1, Section 22. The fixture was cancelled because the home team weren't able to provide appropriate medical cover. The RFL compliance will now consider what further action to be taken. So there's still some um, retribution that will need to be done against the Scholars, I'm afraid, due to that instance. Um, whether that is a suspended fine or anything like that, which I think is the only sufficient, the only sufficient um, action in my ca case. But that's up to the RFL to decide. Um, there have been a few other clubs that have had that sort of instance over the season. Back in April the 22nd, 2022, uh, there was confirmation of the cancellation of the game between West Wales Raiders and Doncaster RLFC for their game on April the 23rd. They were also given a 48 points to nil victory, Doncaster, in this case, but no further information of what other reprimands the West Wales Raiders get or got. 
I do feel it's unfortunate that the medical cover couldn't be caught, uh, couldn't be uh, found, but the rules are in place for what happens when that is the case. Maybe they should have a, uh, a backup week before or anything like that, just in case a fixture goes up, or see if the opposing club can help out with their with the doctor cover. Don't know. It needs to be looked at a bit more. There's too still too many um, clubs having this issue. I know the part part time clubs, and they have to get doctors in when they haven't um, got anyone involved. But should this really be a club matter, or should it be organised by the RFL? That might be the the way down the track. The RFL organising all the doctors so that there is cover in place and people know where they stand well in advance. The second game of the day sees Parramatta play host to the Warriors at the Combank Stadium on Friday night, with the home side looking to get back into the top four by finding some consistency. The Eels got back on track with a, res uh, a resounding 24 points to 20 victory over the West Tigers last week, but their final 15 minutes of the match proved they're still not quite at the ruthless Premiership winning level. Um, they were when they started the season. Parramatta have gone win-loss, win-loss, win in the past five games uh, with their clash against the Warriors a chance to break uh, the unwanted trend. The Warriors broke a seven game losing streak with victory over West Tigers in round 16 before enjoying a bye round. Despite their finals chances looking slim, after the appointment of Andrew Webster for 2023, many players will be looking to finish the season strong and impress the new coach. And with that, here are the two run on squads for uh, 24 hours out. The Eels have made no changes in the 24-hour squad updates for Brad Arthur's men, with skipper Junior Polo set to back, uh, return just 48 hours after his Origin 3 performance. Maratta Nikore uh, shifts back to the lock position, Makahesi Makatoa uh, returns to the bench, and Nathan Brown is in reserves. Ryan Matterson remains sidelined with a rib injury after missing the win over the Tigers. Jake Arthur has been added to the bench for the first game since round 8. And Tom Opacic goes to 18th man. The Warriors interim head coach Stacey Jones is set is yet to test negative. Neg uh, yet to test negative after contracting COVID-19. And he's and looks unlikely to join the squad with winger Dalin Watani Zalesniak already ruled out after testing positive. The non COVID virus, which led to Ronald Voltman being left out of the squad, has hit Jazz Tavenga. But the forward remains likely to play. While he continues to feel the lingering impacts of COVID, departing fullback uh, Reese Walsh will play after missing round nine, uh, 16. Edward Cozy, who scored seven tries in the past five games for Redcliffe in the Host Plus Cup, gets a shot on the wing in place of Watani Zalesniak, while Chanel Har Harris Tavita replaces Boltman at 5'8. Jack Murchie joins the bench with Bailey Sirenson, you know, Sirenum suffering a fractured eye socket. And the final score at uh, Parramatta is the Eels 28, New Zealand Warriors 18, as Parramatta running five tries to go up into fifth, for at least the time being, in the NRL ladder. Wacker Blake got a double to start off proceedings, then Montoya. Marcel Montoya has gone on the 32nd minute, which meant that the two teams went in at half time 10 points to 6, with Mitchell Moles missing the opening kick of the game. Then it was Parramatta with three tries, Isaiah Papali'i um, rampaging over to be honest, a big open gap, no one was stopping him and he just reached for the line. 
Clint Gutherson got on the end of a mistake from Marcel Montoya uh, to score on the right side of the pitch. Then make a Sivo on a kick return, powered down the left wing after receiving the pass from Gutherson and his centre to score in the left hand corner. There was a late flourish from Edward Cozy and Jack Murchie in the last final three minutes for the New Zealand Warriors, but it was Parramatta's day as they win 28 points to 18. And that's it for another episode. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe and share this video worldwide, as well as clicking that notification bell for any updates or new videos that may be coming your way. Tell me what your thoughts are of today's episode. There was so much to go through. Two NRL games went to form. Or did they? With Cronulla beating the Cowboys. That's that's put um, Melbourne who had the opportunity to go back into second. Um, New Zealand Warriors. Their faint chances of getting into those top eights is getting smaller and smaller. With a Parramatta side that are getting better and better. Mal Meninga, talking about Australia and their preparations. He's sure they'll be fine, ready for the upcoming World Cup. And Keith Lee Cougars getting 48 points to nil win. No, I duped up jokes about it in a previous episode, but I think that's the right result at the end of the day. And tell me what your thoughts are on the entire episode in the comments below. If you agree with me about the RFL being charging of the Doctors, I think they should. Hey ho, I'm just a humble little uh, YouTuber. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please remember to share, share, share this video worldwide. But in the meantime, please stay safe. I'll wish you all the best. And I'll see you in the next episode.